Hello, we're going to do a tutorial on how to obtain network data from a network database, a biological network database, how to import that information into MATLAB and how to deal with it. Find out information about it, do some simple analysis and also find a way to display the data. So before I do this, I want to share with you my screen and uh, sharing my screen will then allow me to bring up uh, my web browser and go for to search for Reactome. So I'm here in the Reactome pathway browser. And if I have a specific interest, say in the circadian clock, you can see at the top also that this is now selected for the Homo sapiens, for the human information about the circadian clock network or the underlying molecular network for the circadian clock, we can see that there are several downloads option from which we can get the SPML file by clicking on the SPML logo. And the web browser tells me the download is complete and you can see that this file is now on my desktop here in the top right. So then we don't need the web browser anymore, but we need to bring up a MATLAB window. And I start a new script file, which is by default here called Untitled 2, but I prefer to give it the name Reactome or Circadian. Let's call it Circadian, Circadian, because it's the Circadian network. So that's my script file with its name and I can start to type commands. First thing I'm going to do, uh, add a comment here, is import network data uh, contained in that file. How do we do that? Uh, my net or my, we'll call it my network, and you get it using the function SPML import. It's an SPML file, you import it as SPML, uh, put as an argument the name of that file, and the name needs to be in single quotes. So what is the name? It's RDES uh, Homo sapiens is HSA, and then comes the identifier 400253 dot, and this is now called SPML. I should note that this is a recent change. Previously, the Network files used to be that the network files used to be called to have the extension .xml. So now it's .spml, but of course you have to be consistent. If your file is called XML, you call it XML here, but mine is called SPML, so I call it SPML. And I can try to execute this code and see indeed this has been successful. There are 95 reactions recorded, 116 species, meaning there are 116 nodes in my network. There are also six cellular compartments, and the whole thing is imported as a symbology model. That's why for this, to use those functionality, you need to have the symbology toolbox installed. So once you have it, it's all now in my net. Uh, we can go on and extract information from it, and we extract two pieces of information from it first piece of information is the adjacency matrix. And we call that net for short. That will be the adjacency matrix. And we get the node names. If you remember that typically if you set up a network in Biograph within MATLAB Bioinformatics Toolbox, the nodes will be called node 1, node 2, node 3. But we don't want to have that for 116 nodes, as in this case of the circadian clock. So we want the proper names the annotations from the uh, molecular database. So, and then to get the adjacency matrix, the function is called to get uh, adjacency matrix. It's one long word, get adjacency matrix, and you offer the network data as an argument. And in this case, everything is contained in my net. So this is a way to extract network matrix and node names 
from that specific file. Um, let's do this. Okay, this ha that has worked. And the node names, you can see already we can uh, have a glimpse expression of AVP. Here's CryptoChrome, here's NR1D1, and so on. Uh, some uh, e informative node name that helps us understand what is behind that specific node. Right, how can we uh, have a display of that network? We can use image SC. So that's an show display uh, an image and SC refers to scaled. And if we display this network information, what's my network called net. So if we do this again, then it's imported again. And we can see the network information here in form of the adjacency matrix. See, an adjacency matrix clearly shows us that this is a bipartite graph. It's bipartite because there's the nodes from 0 to 100, and what is it, 16, 17, somewhere here. There's no connections among those nodes, and there's no connections among the rest of the nodes from wherever that cutoff was until 170 in total. So we have empty spaces because there are two qualitatively different types of nodes connected with each other, but not within each other. Just close that graph and we can start a new section here to work further, but without having to import this all the time. Now, if we want to have a look at this, at this network matrix, then you will see that compared to the textbook materials, it's in a different form. Rather than having all the numbers 0 and 1 nicely organized in a matrix, it just gives us the edges one by one. So the highlighted one, the last edge here, is the edge from node 84 to 175. This is so-called sparse notation or sparse matrix in MATLAB, which, however, we can convert to our usual full matrix by using the functionality full. So we call full and we give it as an argument our network, which is net. And we want to save that. We want to save that as net sub full. So we give it a new name. And this is convert sparse to full matrix is what we did here. Well, let's have a look whether this worked. And indeed, when I execute this code, you can see there's now, if I go down zeros and ones in the matrix, just a very huge matrix. Occasionally, there are ones here, but mostly it's zeros. So because of this, it's much more uh, space saving if I only annotate the edges, just silently assuming everything else will be zero. Uh, we might ask, what is the size of this matrix? Take a look. Uh, net sub full has a size of 175 times 175. So we have in addition to the molecular species, the protein nodes, we also have the reactions as additional nodes. And in total in that bipartite graph matrix, 175 nodes total. OK, having this information, we can do simple uh, quantitative analysis of it. What if we want to use, uh, have a look at the out degree? So if we want the out degree, then we need to store that in a variable, the out degree. And how do we get the out degree? So we know that we can get all the information from the network matrix. How do we get it? Uh, simple cases, we sum over the elements of a network matrix. And if we do it in the right way, we get either the in degree or the out degree. You remember the in degree was the sum over the columns of that matrix, see previous session. And so if we want the out degree, we need to inverse that matrix and the transpose of it by adding this single quote at the end of the line. And if I put a comment here, that means get the out degree of that network. Let's run it. And of course, as expected, for 175 nodes, we get 175 numbers. And you can see there are two, one, 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 four, two, and so on until the end. If we want to have a, a look at these 
to look at 175 numbers is not very informative. Uh, so what we can do, we can have a quick overview using the histogram. If we do a histogram of the out degree, and here shows how we can use it. We can put a couple of bits. Let's just see by default, what does the histogram look like by default? It's a quite nice binning. So there are a couple of nodes that have no connections. It seems there's zero and that's more than 20. There are many, many nodes that have a single connection. So just one out degree is an edge that goes outward. So single connection is in actually more than 90 cases. And then there's a certain distribution which we can look at in this specific way here, the histogram. So one thing that strikes us, of course, this thing here with 16, there seems to be at least one node that has 16 outward facing edges. And that's something of interest because in the network, if one node is specifically strongly connected, in this case, outward radiating to many other molecular species, that might be a central key uh, molecular species in that network. So the question is, how do we get access to the index of that node that has this high out degree and how can we identify what the molecular species behind it is. So we can find out specific things about the elements of a matrix using Boolean expression. So if we are interested in that node with the highest degree, we can search for it. We can say, what is the maximal degree? Put that in a variable by applying the function max to our out, out degree variable. Out degree contains all of them. And if we say the maximum, then the largest member of it, I can just run it and we can see we don't need to have the histogram again. The largest number 16 is indeed now saved as max degree. I just comment this out here so it's not bothered any longer if I run the code again. So that max degree we can use for a Boolean checking, namely we can say if out degree out degree is equal equal to max degree. And we'll find, aha, max degree is a certain number. In this case, we know it's going to be 16. And then this Boolean comparison will tell us where in that array, which is called out degree, where in that array actually is that, can we find this thing here, this maximal degree. And if we want to have the index to know which node it is that has this, we use the function find over it. So we make this Boolean comparison and apply the find function to it. And what we can see in the command window, that node with maximum degree 16, its index is 59 in that network. So node number 59 will have the maximal out degree, which is 16. And if we can put that in a variable, we can then search for it for search for its name. So what do we call it? We call it the hub. That's the most densely connected, or at least in terms of out degree, we call it the hub. So put it in that variable. So our variable is now that index of that node. And because we have previously also extracted the names of the nodes, and they are now stored on the headings, we'll be able to, now we have the hub, which is 59. And if we then just say headings and provide it hub as an argument. So we say the heading, what is the heading of hub? <coughs> Excuse me. Then we can find it in the command window. It's displayed the name of that maximally connected node in the specific network of the human circadian clock is a thing called pbmal1.pclock. 
And what it means is a heterodimer, there's two proteins, uh, simply phosphorylated proteins, uh, together, joined together in a heterodimer. And you can see they're found in the nucleoplasm, and they seem to be playing a particularly important role in the human circadian network as stored in the reactome database. It's a bit of a warning if you have an older file downloaded from our Moodle page, or if you have it, if you see that, wind, uh, that uh, video at a later time and you have a more recent version of it, the individual details of that network information can change, of course, because Reactome constantly updates things. And so it can be new, new nodes added if a new protein or protein complex is identified. There can be new ed edges added if there's something uh, newly is reported in the literature by some kind of uh, method. And of course, information can also be taken out if for some reason it was found that it is no longer relevant. And with this, we come to the end of this short tutorial. Um, I hope you are now able to download network information to import it into MATLAB as an uh, SBML file and then extract the adjacency matrix or network matrix and work with it as usual, as you can see in our materials. Bye.